Hey everyone, welcome back to In a Pinch. I'm Chris, and today we're talking about McChrystal's Hops. Um, I was actually on my way out to the garage to break in my new pipe, and I realized that <clears throat> the whole day had gone by and I hadn't recorded a review. And given that I didn't record a review last week, and the week before that, after I did the Tom Buck review, I never recorded the Gold Label review, I promise. I thought, eh, I better go ahead and get this one in. If you'll indulge me for a minute, uh, the pipe I was about to break in, it's a uh, Heisenberg Zulu. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Heisenberg pipes at all. Uh, yeah, see, this is where I really wish I had some decent lighting going on here. At the very least, let me see if I can show you this. Um, try to flashlight on my phone. Wish me luck. Um, yeah, see, that's not even right. Gosh, the lighting's horrible. Um, when I get a good camera going, actually, I broke the freaking camera on my phone. Uh, but when I get a good camera going again, I'll I'll, I'll throw some uh, some pictures up of this on my Instagram account. Um, Jim Brown is my favorite pipe carver, and it is my aim to one day have a huge Heisenberg collection. Uh, he's a super stand-up guy too. I'll put a link in the description for you, and that's not a, a advertisement. He's doing pretty well uh, without my plugs. It's just my honest opinion, I, I I love his stuff. They come in a uh, uh, one of these crocheted bags, and uh, Jim's wife Debbie crochets these. I never consider myself a crochet guy, uh, but she has a page. She has a business, Debbie's Creations, and I had never appreciated a doily until I saw, until I saw some of the doilies that she does. Um, they're really like the patterns. I, I don't think they're meant to look like Celtic knots, but a lot of them look like Celtic knots, like they're these repeating patterns, and they're really cool. I, I, I got my wife one, and she was thrilled. She's a huge fan of uh, of Debbie, and yeah, both of them just really stand up people. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to uh, her Facebook page for uh, Debbie's Creations, too, <clears throat> for you guys to check out. Anyways, I know that in the uh, at the end of the Tom Buck video, I said the next review I was going to do was Gold Label. But in one of these videos, um, somewhere I had to have mentioned that what I do with SPs, I'll get into a mood for Bergamo, and then I'll use for a period of time, uh, usually at least a month, all I'll use that time is Bergamo. And eventually I'll completely burn myself out and won't touch SPs again until the next time the mood strikes. Sometime between doing the Tom Buck review and now, I burnt myself out on Bergamo. Um, and I've been kind of, you know, taking a little pinch of this, a little pinch of that. You guys know I haven't been using a whole lot of tobacco lately. Uh, so it's really just, you know, a little pinch here, a little pinch there. Um, and today I broke into this, uh, McChrystal's Hops. This came from, uh, Frank Marulo, by the way, <clears throat> over on the Nasal Snow Figures group. Uh, Frank ran into some health problems and he had to, uh, quit nicotine, so he put his entire snuff collection up for, uh, bed and... As a stroke, a really good timing. I got I got first crack at the list and went ahead and grabbed the uh, hops because I meant to try it for a while. Um, wish uh, Frank a uh, speedy recovery and hope you stick around the groups, man. You're fun to talk to. You're a good guy. Anyways, so <clears throat> this is my second full take of this review. I got seven minutes into the last one and everything froze up and I tried to check the video that was there and it was invalid and. Um, so really I'm already like probably 40 minutes into trying to do this video because on top of that I have this thing where the first 30 seconds, right, the first 30 seconds I do something and I stutter or I say something wrong and I have to stop and go back and re-record. Once I get past that 30 seconds I'm good but like every single video the first 30 seconds I just get really OCD about <clears throat> and you know you, you, you wouldn't look at uh, the first 30 seconds of my videos and think I put all that much thought into it but um, anyways, I lost my track of thought already, man. Um, yeah, so McChrystal's Hops, I'm running on the assumption that this is the same as their, uh, Hoppenschnuff, what was it called, the, uh, uh, Stanheimer Hoppenschnuff. Don't mind me if I, if I look up at the screen from time to time, but at the la that last video, <coughs> excuse me, after that last video uh, froze on me, I'm going to be checking from time to time to make sure it's actually still recording. I'm not talking into air. Um, I'm under the assumption that this is the same thing as the Standheimer, I think it was, Hoffenschnuff, uh, which I never tried, but always meant to. Um, and I'm, I'm 
I'm going to assume they just renamed it Hops for, uh, well, it's easier on the tongue. I mean, I, I saw a whole bunch of discussions on Hop and Schnoof, and I still can't remember what the, uh, the first word was. I think it was Stanheimer, something like that. I probably should look that up before doing the video. I try to sound at least halfway intelligent. Uh, every once in a while I pull it off. Anyways, I've heard this described a whole lot of ways. And of course, I've considered buying it before, which means I know what it is. Um, I've seen at least a couple of reviews on it, although I tried not to watch any leading up to this one. Um, there, I've, I've been involved in threads on it. And of course, I've gotten into discussions on the uh, various groups about this stuff. So I, I know what it is, and I've heard it described a number of ways. Uh, everywhere from uh, it smells like beer to more specifically, it smells like lager to more bizarrely, um, gosh, what do you say, uh, something and weed. Uh, someone thought it smelled like something and uh, uh, weed. Um, and none of those answers are wrong, you know. That's that's why I don't like to do the rating system. And that's one of the reasons I don't like to do the rating system, personally. Because if you give, if, if you take an unmarked tin of snuff, right, and pass it on a circle of ten people and have them without talking to each other at all, just write down on paper what their impressions are. Everyone's impression is going to be a little bit different, and none of them are wrong. And my impression is going to be different than your impression. So if my impression is unfavorable, and I come on here and say, this stuff is garbage, you'll never try it, and you might have loved it. Anywho, uh, that's enough rambling. We'll get to the review. Uh, we're already seven minutes in, and I haven't even opened the tent. So I'll crack the tin open, and uh, these are McChrystal's tins, which are the same as the Wilson's Ashero tins, and Jane H. Wilson's tins, so be a little careful opening it. Uh, looking at it, I'm not sure if the lighting's going to do it right, but yeah, no, that's about right. That's the color. It's a uh, little darker than a medium brown. Uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, McChrystal's, it's uh, lighter than the um, ONG, but not by a whole lot. And the, only, the, the only reason the ONG is that dark is because of uh, all the extra moisture from adding the menthol and the eucalyptus. Uh, the scent out of the tin is really just the McChrystal's base tobacco, which I love. It's it's like leather and biscuits. Uh, they, I, I was talking with Alex this weekend, I don't know if anybody, Mac Beagle, shout out, um, and yeah, we were talking on the phone, and I was telling, we were talking about McChrystal's amongst other things, and I told him, yeah, McChrystal's, as far as commercial snuff makers, McChrystal's has my favorite base tobacco. It used to be Toke, but ever since I tried ONG and started exploring the McChrystal's line, I love their base tobacco. Um, I'm actually not sure if they do a natural or not, if they do, I... I should definitely get some of that and review it. But yeah, out of the ten, that's really all I got is the base tobacco. I'm gonna take a pinch. No, let's take a big one. There we go. Now we'll take one. I don't know if you can see. Take one of those guys. While that warms, um, I was kicking around the idea, guys. <clears throat> and I don't know. I'm not huge into vlogs. I, I actually just started getting into my first vlog. Um, so I kind of get it, but. I know a lot of you guys have mentioned what you like about my channel uh, isn't even the reviews, it's the rambling. You like to watch me ramble. So I, I've, I've been kicking around the idea of maybe completely detached from this channel I do a uh, vlog. Um, I really don't know what it would be about. I go to work, I come home uh, and do the family thing, you know, with my wife and my kids and nothing too exciting. So I don't even know what I would vlog about. So I guess it'd more be... Um, Chunks of video, just straight rambling. For those of you who are into it, uh, let let me know what you think. You know, if I did something like that, would you watch it? Um, I don't know. Warned. Salute. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So it's 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 weird, and this isn't the only snuff like this, but they're far and. Uh, a few between, <clears throat> few and far between, few and far between, because I'm totally awake. Few and far between when uh, uh, what you get in the nose is radically different from what you get in the tin. Because like I said, in the tin, all I get is the McChrystal's base tobacco. Um, in the nose, I get hops. <laughs> no, um, I I don't get beer at all. This isn't beer. Uh, this 
this smells like hops, man. And hops doesn't smell like beer any more than grapes smell like Syrah. Um, if you're not familiar with hops, because I, I, I have no idea what hops uh, really smelled or tasted like um, until I did uh, uh, my review of the, the Connie Anderson, uh, uh, the IPA snooze, what was it called? Hope and Glory. Um, I, I knew what beer tasted like, but I quit drinking like five years ago. And IPAs existed, but they weren't really a thing. And even if they had been a thing, I was a whiskey drinker, so I wouldn't have tried it anyways. Um, but uh, if I were to describe, I won't try to describe hops. It's just if I were to describe this to you, there's a funk to it, right? Um, and it's not a bad funk. It's just a like, oh, what was that kind of funk? It's uh, it's citrusy without smelling like fruit. And it's earthy without smelling like herbs. And it's floral without smelling like flowers. Um, hops is really one of those things that only hops smell like. There's a sourness to it. And I want to say a bitterness because a bitterness is more accurate. But when, um, when I think bitter, like automatically it's bad. Uh, bitter can be good in flavor, but bitter doesn't smell good. It smells sour. And I'm inclined to believe that they actually used uh, hop oil and not an artificial scent in this because when you get the back drip, you can taste that soapiness, the same soapiness I was getting from the, uh, the Hope and Glory. And actually, if you uh, go just a little overboard with this, which I did the first day I, got, I, I had it, um, it'll start to numb the back of your throat the way uh, Hope and Glory did. Not in a bad way, just in a, like, all right, yeah, this is some pretty strong hops. And that's really the whole thing. Um, the scent itself, it's not like, it doesn't kick you in the face, man. It's just, you know, it's there, but it's not, like, intense. But despite it not being intense, it persists for a really long time, especially for McChrystal's. Um, and, and that's not at this on McChrystal, it's just, you know, the, the commercial snuff makers or snuffs can smell it extremely good, but usually not for more than a few minutes, with some exceptions. Um, Samuel Goff is a huge exception, but, you know, Toke, I, I, I love Toke. Um, however, I never smell Toke more than two or three minutes after I took the pinch. Uh, Wilson's a Shero, with the exception of the uh, uh, SPs and the menthols, Wilson's a Shero is kind of the same story. Uh, smells really, really good for a short time. This sticks with you for a while. I mean, even indoors without the fresh air, I can smell this for a good half hour. And again, it's not super intense, so it's not gonna like it's not gonna start bugging you. Um, it never really fades. Um, um, like some snuffs, they kind of start fading layer by layer until you're just left with the base tobacco. This just, it stays together as one cohesive unit. I actually, in the nose, I can't smell the base tobacco at all. I smell the, all of the things I would use to describe hops. Um, and all of it, including the base tobacco, slowly fade after about 30 minutes. Uh, nicotine's probably medium. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I'm not a great gauge of nicotine. Uh, there is nicotine in it because it doesn't leave me wanting more right away. Um, it doesn't blow me over with nicotine. I'm going to call it a medium. Um, nicotine isn't really why I take snuff anymore. And now that I've cut down, actually, uh, so significantly on tobacco, I appreciate it an awful lot more than I used to. And I'm back to just taking snuff for the enjoyment of it. And hopefully that means my reviews get better. Um, but yeah, McChrystal's, uh, hops, for me, it would, it wouldn't be an all day snuff. It was today, but today was kind of, a weird day as far as that goes. Um, but because of the funk to it, this is a snuff to, to definitely have in your rotation somewhere for that when you just want something a little different. I'll tell you when I really like this. Um, I, I, I wet shave, and I know a lot of you guys wet shave too, and the, the, the product that I use, and I'm not going to advertise, but the product that I use is mahogany scented, and it smells like mahogany and cedar, and there's some spices in there. It's very, it's very autumnal. Um, usually I don't like taking snuff after I shave because I like to smell that smell, but this actually goes really, really good with that. Um, but it would never be an all day. 
Uh, that said, I'll always have some on hand. So when this tin goes empty, I'll buy more. And when that goes empty, I'll buy more. Um, great stuff. Highly recommended, along with the entire McChrystal's line. Uh, soon I'll be recording a review for McChrystal's Violet because they, they won me over on a floral, and that's not easy to do. I don't get into florals, but uh, uh, that's coming up. Uh, I will still do the gold label review. I burnt myself on SPs, but I still have you know my personal notes that I took on it, so I can still do that review. Um, as long as I'm doing SPs, I don't think I ever did... I'll have to go back to my videos and check, but I don't think I ever did J.N.H. Wilson's SP number one. Uh, if I didn't, I'll do that. And I have the Rosinski line to review. I have a few more that came from uh, Frank I want to review. And more coming in from a group buy that I went in on that I'm going to review. It's, it's going to be a lot of reviews this fall and this winter. Uh, it really did mean I'm, I'm going to get back into it. This video is 16 minutes now, and most of it is me rambling. I hope you guys got something out of that. I, I, I really hope you guys enjoy these. I really enjoy making them. Um... It's Friday night. Uh, it's getting late by the time I edit this. This probably won't go up until uh, tomorrow. But in any event, you guys uh, uh, have a safe weekend. Be mellow. Take care of yourselves. God bless. And salute.